this is Christian from Forward Momentum. On today's episode, we are going to install an oil catch can on the Lexus GS400. I'm going to talk a little bit about what those are and how they can benefit your vehicle. I'm also going to show you the results of my oil catch can after a couple weeks of use. So be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And let's take a look at the oil catch can now. This is the oil catch can that I purchased. I got it on Amazon and it was pretty much the cheapest one out there. It's got two inlets and one outlet. And I'll show you why that's important, at least for my install. And I'll let you make the decision if you want to run two different oil catch cans off of each bank or how you want to handle that. But I feel that the cleanest install would be bank one and bank two going in and then out and that would make this a closed loop system. They do have some systems that breathe into the atmosphere but I didn't want to do that because my experience with those breathers has been not so great on different vehicles. It made it smell really bad and in some states it's illegal especially if you have to pass it inspection. So that being said I decided to go with a closed loop system. Now the drawback of a closed loop system like this is you still are reintroducing that hot air back into the intake and on a breather type system you're expelling that hot air into the atmosphere. It basically condenses the contaminants. Let's take a look at what came with the kit and I thought these were plastic at first but they're actually anodized aluminum. So these are pretty nice but they're half inch. Half inch doesn't do us a whole lot of good. We don't have any half inch lines on our crankcase ventilation system on the Lexus GS400. So I had to go out and buy some other stuff and I'll show you that in a minute. But you got three of these that came with the kit. This is the plug that goes in the bottom. I took it out just for this video because I'm not going to be using it. So I just removed that because I'm going to go with a different setup and I'll show you that. It came with a couple mounting screws that look like this. And then it came with these two little tiny o-rings. Let's take a look at the inside of this oil catch can. That's what it looks like on the inside. That's going to be where the fluid is kept. Comes with an o-ring right here, which is nice. It's got a baffle plate. You know, the construction appears to be pretty good. This here is a brass screen. What some guys do is they stuff steel wool in here. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna try to run this exactly as you see it here and let you guys know how that turns out in a couple weeks. This bracket on top you remove by pulling these two fasteners out and that's how we're gonna mount it. We're gonna take this bracket off, get this thing separated, and we're gonna take a look at a good place to mount this thing. And it should be mounted straight up and down like so. Let's take a look at all the tools and extra parts that you're going to need to do this install properly. And you're going to need 3 8 inch hose like this. Again, something durable and braided and something that will resist chemicals and heat. Okay? You don't want to use that plastic polyethylene stuff that a lot of these kits come with because the underhood temperatures are too much for that type of material and those just become discolored when all that contaminant fluid gets, goes through those over time. So they're just going to turn brown anyway and nobody wants brown tubes under their under their hood. You're going to need some fasteners like this. And these were just ones I had laying around. You're going to need a pretty small screw. This is about a quarter inch long with a washer and a nut. And I'll show you what you're going to use those for. This You're going to need a drill bit for the size of fastener that you're going to utilize. You're going to need three of these 3 8 inch adapters and that is going to help us utilize a lot of the stock hose size under the hood and I'm basically going to switch out those black ones that I showed you earlier so these are what came with the kit and we're going to switch them out for these and I'll show you why next you're going to need some of that PTFE thread tape, seal tape you can find that where the air tools are located and these are good for sealing up connection or uh, threaded connections. Hose clamps. These are great to have around anyway. You're going to need one of these Allen wrenches and this is going to be utilized to get this bracket off on top right here. 10 millimeter 
I use an extension on mine and I like to use my drill and basically what we're going to use this for is to take the cover off the ECU box and that's where I'm going to be mounting this oil catch can too. So that is all the stuff you're going to need to do this install. There might be a few things along the way that I change slightly but that's only because I haven't mounted this yet. Let's take a look at the mounting location now. What you're looking at here is the ECU cover and I believe the best place for this oil catch can is going to be right here. Part of the reason I think that is because if you look down inside there, should there be a leak that develops, there is nothing down in there that is critical that that would drip onto. Now if I had it over here, I would greatly worry about the electric fans and all these pulleys because look what I have for a future episode. These awesome pulleys. So I want these to be very visible. Don't want an oil catch can covering those. That'll be a future episode. Be sure to subscribe. This is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking right there. I don't want to use it that way. So I'll go ahead and get those off. This is the location on the lid. If you don't have one of these paint pens, these things are awesome. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna mark where to put the holes on this lid. No matter where you decide to mount it, just make sure that your fasteners won't be hitting anything crucial. In this case, I'm fine. The ECU is well protected. Let's talk about the crankcase ventilation. You have one here and it runs into the intake, in my case an aftermarket intake. And then you have your positive crankcase ventilation valve, which if you've seen a previous episode of mine, I show you how to change that out. It is located here. And you might think, well, why do I only have one positive crankcase ventilation valve? And the answer is fairly simple, because you only have one crankcase. <laughs> Don't worry about all the physics behind it. Just know that you're, you have contaminants coming out, going in to the intake manifold here, and into the intake pipe here. And I will show you with a boroscope all of the crap that goes in there. take the crankcase ventilation off bank two. This hose clamp here, that should come right off there. What I'm gonna do is set it to the side. Okay, next we need to get this PCV line off. This should be fairly easy to just squeeze. Uh, yours might have a look much fatter than this. I had actually taken off the cover previously, so that's why mine looks a little different. I kind of wanted to see underneath there, be able to just kind of wiggle and gently twist and pull and this will come off. So let's put this to the side and save it. This is what we ended up with guys. You can put your own custom touches on the drain. You could put a clear pipe in here or hose. You could change out this fitting for a stopcock so you could just open it up and it would drain out into a cup or something. So this is very customizable here but I highly recommend that you get these 
barbed fittings up here because I'll show you why as we route um, the inlets and the outlet. But this is what it looks like and this is where it will go so you can see kind of how it's going to look. That's where it'll go right there and you can turn it a little bit if you need to. What I'm going to do now is size this up be sure to put your hose clamp on there. I'm going to push it on to the PCV valve. And I'm going to make sure that this is going to be long enough. And I think that'll be good right about there. The next line we're going to run is the bank two crankcase ventilation over to the second port here on the oil catch can. I think the best thing to do is to come up through here above the throttle body and then to remove this bracket. And the way you remove this bracket is you're going to need to take off this connection and then I already disconnected this, but disconnect this and then connect it underneath this throttle body um, coolant line right here and this wire harness. Kind of plug them together underneath and that will allow this to cleanly run through here and give it a lefty loosey. And there's gonna be two Phillips head on this side. I'm gonna undo them right here and then this whole bracket's gonna come off. You can see it's already loose. Two fasteners and the bracket. I would definitely save these. I need to go ahead and make the cut. Right about here. This will make it run properly. You're going to have to find some kind of plug up here. I just had this random cap thing. It actually looks okay. And put it right there. And don't forget to tighten these fasteners because we kept them loose so we could rotate this thing a little bit. This is the original drain design coming out of the bottom of the catch can. And I didn't like it because it requires you to unplug it to see if there's any oil in it. And I always wanted something clear. So I was scrounging around in a box and I found this tube which goes to a funnel. And it just so happens that these half inch fittings that come with the kit fit perfectly right there. Now that would be amazing because you can see this thing start to fill up, well, this way. You can see it start to fill up just by looking into the vehicle under the hood. You don't have to release the drain until you see it start to get up to here. And let's see if this will work. Looks like that'll work. That fit very nice in this tube at the bottom. I went ahead and I put a hose clamp on there and so this will act as my drain release. This is the new design which is a funnel flexible hose. You can get it at any auto parts store and I went ahead and I cut it at the right spot so I could add this plug that I found in my toolbox and I went ahead and threw a hose clamp on there just to make sure that it didn't leak down there. Guys, it's the moment of truth. It has been a couple weeks and about 300 miles, and I'm about to take the oil catch can off and look inside and see if my Lexus GS400 actually had enough blow by to put a measurable amount inside of my oil catch can. Keep in mind, this oil catch can is 18 bucks US. So it's very cheap, but it's also kind of a knockoff of the higher end models like Mishimoto. 
I'm gonna warn you on that right now. When I pulled into the garage and my family came home, they all asked me if I had been doing burnouts. <laughs> I said, no, I have not been doing burnouts. That is the oil catch can and I explained to them how it worked. But the smell is horrible. So if the smell is gonna be a deal breaker to you, then this oil catch can is not one that you wanna purchase. Because when I pull into the garage, man, it stinks. When I stop at a parking spot, after a while, it smells bad. All right, let's go ahead and pop this thing off and let's see if we have any oil inside. As you can see, we do not have anything in the drain tube I installed. That's okay. I'm not gonna write this thing off just yet. Well, it looks like this was successful in that it did capture some oil. Check this out, guys. See it in there? Look at that. That is about 300 miles in two weeks. We have a little bit in the tube. You can see it on the threads. So it is working. I hope this video helped you make a decision whether or not you want to run an oil catch can on your particular car. Again, the smell, it's pretty bad. So keep that in mind if you're gonna purchase this. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button. If you're not a subscriber, please join me and hit that subscribe button. Also, leave a comment. I read them all and I try to respond to each one. I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall this and I'm gonna prepare for my next episode, which you don't wanna miss. We're gonna install some of these pulleys on this vehicle. So you don't wanna miss that. See you on the next one.